today we are living through the most dangerous moment of the post-Cold War period. We face the risk of a major military conflict on our continent. At stake, there is the fate of Ukraine, but also the wider principles of the European security. We are surrounded by threats in our neighborhoods, but also on our own soil. The European Union doesn't advance unless there is a serious crisis. So this is sort of the, the, the moment of truth in many ways. What's happening right now in Ukraine, unfortunately, is not only about the Ukraine. It's about the very foundations of the European order, about the security order. And I think Europe is showing more and more signs of strategic courage. The line between war and peace now is blurred, right? Mm. And geopolitics used to be very much about tanks and soldiers and armaments and nuclear missiles. But nowadays, you know, it's about information, it's about technology, it's about trade. Almost every day of the week, there is a cyber attack, a serious cyber attack, somewhere in Europe. When we say that the European member states have to spend more on defense, what they need to do is to spend better. Deterrence only works if the others know what you have. We have to maintain absolute unity. And we have to make the deterrence credible. So we have to talk more about what we are going to do and not what we are not going to do. And we must be ready for all the scenarios. And the nature of our response must match the nature of Russian choices. Because what Putin uh, really wants is to, is to bring back, uh, to, as, as you said, turn back the time mm. and bring back spheres of influence with a limited sovereignty for their neighbors. This is something that we as European cannot accept. The question of strategic autonomy is not to turn our back from NATO. But I think that the Europeans has to have a certain capacity not doing competition to NATO, but having its own capacity in a moment, in a place, in a circumstances where NATO will not act. And the goal of strategic autonomy, or I would say strategic responsibility of the EU, is not to replace EU, uh, US in Europe, but to keep it engaged. And we have to stop and think about what are our vital interests and how do we want to defend them. This is exactly what the strategic compass is about. When we are training people but not providing equipment, governments are looking elsewhere. We don't live in a vacuum. What we don't do, others will do it. We can build the best capabilities, but if our adversaries will feel that we are unable to decide and use them quickly, they will be useless as a det deterrence. We will need, as you said, implementation, so tangible resort, uh, results very soon. Three quarters, 72% of Europeans are in favor of a common foreign policy of the member states, and even more, 78% are in favor of a common defense and security policy. When the cost of uh, non-Europe, or the cost of not acting, became so high that people are ready to rethink their red lines and invest in a truly European solutions. Let's jump toward an European security and defense.